doing Kids with Character and it's so exciting that you joined us today again so welcome and if you have not seen our previous session and our wonderful chat all about trees then please be sure to check that out on Facebook, YouTube and all those wonderful places. So today it's myself and Rieta here and we are exciting, excited to start chatting all about trees today. Isn't that awesome? Mm, yes, <laughs> good evening parents and thank you for joining us. I believe you've enjoyed last week's program where we spoke about the different tree type temperaments. And so we will continue with that tonight. And um, so we want to ask you, please make sure that you've watched that first episode. That will just give you a great understanding. Yes, and you know what? I think maybe for those who, who maybe forgot in this week, I know family just becomes crazy sometimes. Let's just quickly run through those four types. So the first type we, we chatted about was the rose bush. Yes. <laughs> What's the second one? The second one we chatted about was the pine tree. Oh, pine tree. Then we went right into a lollipop tree or a boxwood tree. And then the last one was our palm tree. So those are the four different tree type temperaments that we're going to use to just help you to grow your child with a great character to go into this world. And that has helped us. It's a great tool for us. So we have to share this with every parent we come across. So we're excited to delve into this. And uh, But before we get into the major focus for tonight, and by the way, tonight, our focus will be all about communication. How do these different types of trees communicate? How do they understand communication? So that's exciting. So Rita, will every person fit into one of these tree types? No, no, definitely not. Because, um, because every person is so different. So you, most people won't just be a rose bush or won't just be a palm tree or won't just be a pine or a boxwood tree. We find combinations and, um, and we're gonna speak about that a bit later, but we're gonna stick to these four for now, just so that it's easy for you as a parent to identify in which um, type your child fits and how to parent them at this stage. But we will focus on the combination of, of the trees. That's awesome. So I am not just a specific tree or your child is not just a specific tree. Um, that can be a nice combination. Now, I think let's get into this thing for tonight. And um, I think parents, if you are out there, um, please remember to comment down below and please remember to like, if you at least like what you are hearing. But, um, you know, I think what is really awesome is communication is a key thing for every single relationship. And I think for us to be able to understand our children Children and for them to understand us, it will be quite helpful to understand how each tree type actually communicates. Yes, yeah. So, so parents, I think what is really important in our parenting journey for us to grow our children, we must be able to communicate to them. But more than that, we must be able to receive communication from them. And, and that can start from a very young age. So maybe you want to just tell us, um, who are you parenting at this moment? Are you parenting a toddler? Do you have a little baby? Do you have a teenager? Or um, are your children adults already? Or if you are parenting maybe a toddler and a teenager at this stage, please let us know. We would love to hear what the parents are dealing with, you know, what ages and that will just help us to, to prepare a little bit more also. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the communication thing is such an important thing. And if we can understand that, that, that can really help us. So yeah, let's dig into that. Let's start with, with our communication. We're gonna focus first on our rose bush because last mm -hmm. week we also focused on our rose bush and they like to be first, if you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they like to win, they like to be the leader, they like to be the winner. So just comment if you're a rose bush and you're happy about being first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just um, the way, I'm just gonna read a few things here but for you to understand. But um, this is how 
a rose bush will communicate. So if you can identify that in your child, you can understand that they are just busy communicating with you. They're not being naughty. They're not being disrespectful. They, they're not ignoring your discipline or input in their life. This is just how they communicate. And um, so the rose bush, they are very straightforward people. They will tell you as it is, what they see and what they don't see. Very straightforward. They are powerful even in their words when they speak they um they want to come across also powerful they use words to communicate and they don't chit chat so they're very straightforward and then they also use a lot of facts so before they come and approach you before they come and speak to you or when you approach them they will have their facts ready they don't have a lot of sympathy when they speak and they can be untactful when they speak. And um, so this was a, quite an interesting thing for me because I, we, as we said, we have a rose bush in our home. And, um, and that is something you wanna cultivate in your children, especially if they are a rose bush. You wanna cultivate sympathy and empathy in their life. So you're gonna grow that. We're gonna speak about that also. They're quick to offend others. So they don't always mean it, but just because they use words and they use it powerfully, they can come across offensive. They ask a lot of questions and they want it to be answered, but they don't like to be questioned. So that is the key. Okay, So they love to ask questions and they want the answer immediately. And it must be full of facts but don't question them. They have trouble admitting that they are wrong. So the way they will say that they are wrong is just using facts, but they won't admit it straightforward that they are wrong. Um, and they like conflict. They won't avoid conflict. They would want to um, speak about something. They would want to address something. So they're not very good listeners. They like to speak. They don't like to listen always. And that is something we need to grow our child in. So we are giving these things not to say they are bad, but just to say this is how they communicate. This is not how it has to stay for the rest of their life. They can change that. You as a parent can change. You can help your rose bush child to have a bit more sympathy, have blossom in that area of sympathy, blossom in that area of starting to become a listener. Um, yeah, and this part is actually so cute. It says rose bushes are quick to share ideas, but not their hearts. Mm. And that is something that you can also observe in how they communicate as a rose bush. Sure. And I know with, with us having a, a, a younger child that's also a rose bush, you know, we very often. Uh, if they did something wrong, we want them to acknowledge that they did something wrong. And we found with our rose bush in, in our garden, um, it's a struggle. We, we actually realized it's not worth pushing the whole time for that acknowledgement. Although I must say it does come, but by pushing it prolongs the process. Hey? Yes, yeah. Mm. So that is our rose bush, and I think the key thing in in cultivating in your rose bush is sympathy, and also helping that that child to be a, a better listener. So mm. focus on those two things if you know if you have identified that that is that is your child, like a rose bush. The next one we're going to focus on is our palm tree. Now these are actually opposites in some ways. The rose bush from the palm tree, all right? So um, if you remember from our episode last week, we just explained what are the characteristics of a palm tree. I'm gonna focus now on how a palm tree communicates, okay? So you can identify that. The short answer to that is loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying if that's, uh, if we are asking how does a palm tree communicate, loud and clear. Loud and clear. They, they like to actually exaggerate the truth. So they will put a little bit of extra flavor to the truth to just make it greater and bigger. They like smooth talk. It's, what I want to say is that they can actually sell shoes to a snake. 
<laughs> they are just so good in, in, in actually making you forget why you were angry at them because they, they can smooth talk you. They're very self-confident public speakers. So when they speak, you know, the words just come. And, and even if you look in the world, most motivational speakers are at palm trees because they are just great public speakers. They can, they can just speak at any time. And when you have a rose bush and a, and a palm tree and you're trying to sort out conflict in your home, you will have the, the, the rose bush coming with all the facts um, and you will have your palm tree just exaggerating actually making what happened. Making it sound good. <laughs> making it sound amazing. Okay. And they also find it very difficult to listen. Just like the rose bushes, you know, they, they just want to exaggerate and speak. Um, and then they shy away from people with intense emotions. For example, if you come across super angry as a parent and you express that emotion, a palm tree would almost step back from that negative emotion. They will shy away from that. Or maybe like a teenager, they, they are in love with someone and that person just starts to um, want to take things to the next level. You know, they, they're very serious about their love palm tree will almost shy away in their communication because it's just too much emotion for them to handle. All right, even though they are very emotional and expressive, when it becomes too much for them, they shy away. Yeah, so that is the, that is the palm tree. Sure, and then I think important to note here is it can be very easy for a parent to think that their child, their palm tree, is actually lying about different situations. And um, important to note that that's not really what's happening. They they are speaking what they believe to be the truth. <laughs> Just exaggerated. But yes. yes. All right. We're going to go on to, uh, we call it the lollipop, but it's the boxwood tree. And um, yeah, this is actually an interesting one because this, this kind of temperament, this tree type, likes a lot of detail so when they come in and when they communicate they tell the whole background story and they will continue until they see that the person they are telling it to is actually understanding them and actually listening so they won't stop until they can see there is understanding coming or or that person is actually listening. so so Rita, these are the kind of kids and um, if you if it's if it's a child um, that would keep hanging on the parent and say so are you hearing this are you hearing this and the parent has moved on to 15 other things already hey yes. so they just keep going and going hmm. that is exactly that okay so when you get to your female um, boxwood lollipop they are they are also very emotional so they when they speak they will put a lot of emotion in that a lot of anger or a lot of sadness or a lot of excitement when they tell this story um, yeah they overly dramatic with the emotions a, a, a lollipop they are also the kind of kids that complains so their way of communicating is to um, to com complain that's just how they communicate and then also they are very easy to criticize so when they look at someone else or a situation they will sometimes see the negative and, and criticize that also but what is really amazing in their communication skill is they are very keen to listen not like our palm and our rose bush. Our lollipop is actually somebody, a child that will actually listen if you've given them understanding when they spoke and when they explained something to you. Rita, we also have a, a lollipop in our house. And um, I must say, we've seen over, over a couple of months and years, we've seen how actually with the lollipop, a lot of disciplinary things can actually be sorted out just by speaking mm. because they tend to listen so nicely to what you have to say. Mm. Mm. Yes, they have a lot of understanding, but they want understanding also. All right, we're going to end off with our last um, tree type, and that is the pine tree. Okay, the pine tree is generally the 
um, the worst public speakers. So you can't put them on the spot when it comes to communication. They can't make a quick decision. They can't just quickly fall in with everybody else. They, uh, you need to give them some time to communicate. So time is quite a key when it comes to communication with this tree type temperament. They have a very dry sense of humor. I think many of you can identify that in your home also. You know, you find that one. And then another thing that they also do is they like one-on-one -on -one conversations. So um, to communicate to them and to actually get through to them is to pull them aside and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, allowing them to speak to you and say to you what they want to say. And then they have the ability to say the right thing at the right time because they don't just speak they think before they speak so when your pine tree child speaks i want to say to you as a parent listen for that's one thing that i have learned and i'm still practicing is when my pine tree child speaks i can listen because they actually thought a little bit before they spoke. They don't talk much, so they don't use a lot of words, but what they do use is they, they use hints, they use looks, and they will use gestures. So that's a way how they communicate. So if your child is not speaking a lot, maybe look or listen to the little hints coming through, look at their gestures, and look at their looks <laughs> to find out what are they communicating with you as the parent. Trying to fight with a pine tree, this is very interesting. Trying to fight with a pine tree feels like punching a wall made out of jelly. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm just imagining that in my mind and uh, I'm thinking that's so true. <laughs> yeah, they are just so flexible and so it's like you never really get a result it just keeps coming back <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. so at the end of it all our kids are communicating to us and we as parents we must just be ready to acknowledge it and to be able to communicate back to them and in that way grow their character like I said with the rose bush this is the way they communicate in their temperament but we as parents want to grow them we don't want to say, okay, my child is just a rose bush, bush full of thorns. No, you want, I want my child to be a rose bush full of beautiful roses. And for that, I need to help him or her to be more sympathetic and to be a better listener. And that's how I'm letting my child grow in their character. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm telling you, this is so exciting. And um, mm. I think what's what's sad is that the time is almost finished. <laughs> yeah. um, but remember, we have your back. We are coming back every week and um, we are taking this step by step. Um, and even as you have seen probably now already, it's, uh, it's so interesting because as a parent, I do things differently from how my child does it. And there's so much about this. It's not just four trees. It's how to be able to handle and the interpret parts of it. And I'm telling you, that's what this is all about. And that's what's making it so exciting. So I think maybe you must tell us, Rita, I think uh, you have some homework for us. Yeah, I think <laughs> well, part of the, the homework <laughs> or just something that you can do as a parent this week is just observe your trees. So just go stop a little bit and just look at your children and, and, and observe. So I want you to, and, and in observation, I think you will be able to identify the tree type or identify the temperament. So I'm gonna just give you a few things that you can observe this week to identify the tree type. All right, so, I want you to specifically as a parent, and we're also going to do this, is we're going to observe and listen to the type of things our children say. Just to focus on this communication part, just listen to what the things are that your child is saying. All right, so first of all, a typical palm tree will say stuff like this. They will say things like, look here, come here, look at me play with me wow 
Harry! <laughs> I just wanted to say, wow. <laughs> That's something that our pine tree says all the time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if you hear those things all the time, just listen this week a little bit. If you hear those things, you that child has most probably got a part of palm tree temperament. Okay, the next one is a typical rose bush. And they will say things like, no, I will now. I can do it myself. Leave me alone. I won mine. <laughs> so those are the things your rose bush will say. Then the next one is our lollipop, our boxwood child. And these are the type of things your child will say when they have that temperament. I'm scared. I don't like it. It's not nice. It's wrong. I feel sick. All right, so those are the things that a uh, lollipop tree will say. Then we're gonna, our last one is our pine tree. And our pine tree will say things like, I don't want to, I can't, help me, wait for me. I'm too tired, I'm too small, I'm too young. All right, so just go and observe this, this week, just what are the things your child is saying. And if you hear some of these things, maybe it will help you to identify the tree type and then as we go forward with the program, you will know what parts to really open your ears <laughs> and listen. So yeah, and then um, I also want to say, we have our email address just here on the screen, impact at actschurch.com. And if you want to just connect with us, um, just doing a profile test, or just asking a few things just for you as a family personally in regards to the tree types or actually anything else please send us an email and we would love to connect with you and support you in your tree journey that's awesome so please do that we'd love to hear from you and remember to comment down below in the comment section and hit the like button if you like what you are hearing um, and then happy observing this week. See you next week.